morning all it's a horrible morning early start for me um the worst thing you should do if you wake up really early is start looking at your phone i made that mistake and i just <laughs> i'll be in bed at seven tonight um but anyway it's a good time in the morning i'm always better in the morning so i'm gonna i said i'd do this batch ultrafiltration screencast and um, then later in the day i'll send you a problem set to get cracking on We've only one more week to go, so I, I want to be. I'm conscious that we've a couple of important topics um, in dye filtration to do. Um, the first thing you'll notice is I've, when you go on to loop is that I've, I've changed the format a bit. Um, when you're finding it hard to work, one of the best things to do is just fiddle around with formatting. <laughs> so yesterday, I uh, I decided there was a funny thing coming up on my loop pages that said toggle i don't know what i had no idea what that was about anyway I've, I've gotten rid of it so each of the if you just click on each of these things you'll you'll see all the various resources so it kind of looks neater there's the feed and bleed stuff and uh, the, the icons are different now so little movies i think are these arrow things okay and so what we're on is, is batch ultrafiltration and the thing about batch ultrafiltration again like a lot of um stuff in engineering generally certain types of systems lead to certain type of equations so when we had when we looked at feed and bleed systems which are continuous systems we got what's called a non-linear algebraic equation which is nice and easy to to deal with when you have tools like solver around and there are many other ones actually um that are available that are easy to use yeah, but but solver is fine for what we do and then batch ultrafiltration and we saw that batch ultrafiltration indeed batch systems in general the natural language if you like of batch systems are ordinary differential equations so where you have ddt of something is equal to something else and you know they they're everywhere in chemical and biochemical engineering in both in separation process but especially in bioreactors so if you do my option next year we'll encounter more of those um, ordinary differential equations and the thing is of, of all equations to solve ordinary differential equations that you encounter in chemical and, and biochemical systems are really easy to solve not necessarily by hand by slogging out a load of algebra but there are so many cheap tools now to solve equations uh, numerically and i might show you an example of that in, in 371 at the moment i'm inventing data for you um to do calculations on and i'm using an, an ode solver to do the chromatography column and i talk about in the, in the lab manual but anyway what i wanted to do was just uh, expand on the batch ultrafiltration um equation essentially I derived the last say which was a nice typical chemical engineering analysis in the sense that you set up your two balances one looking at the system overall so, and generally that in the sort of work we do that means a, a total volume balance we, we assume that the density is the same everywhere so we had dv dt is minus j times a so the rate at which the volume is dropping in your batch system is equal to minus the flux times a so that was our overall balance um, the accumulation term always being a ddt in the batch system and then we combined that with a, a solute balance so we said we had a mathematical statement of the fact that the amount of solute typically a protein in your tank is constant so at the start of the, the process you have a total amount of protein equal to c0 v0 and at any subsequent time you have a total amount c times v and those two things must be equal because unless your protein is leaking out through the membrane um, and actually the, the lab I've designed for you on batch ultrafiltration next week or week six um, we, we're going to look a little bit at, at the, the issue of what's called rejection where the, the solute leaks through the membrane to some extent okay so I'm going to go to the, the, doc, the, the uh, equation itself so uh, where am I so that's the original document so here we are okay so we'll go to the top so this was the equation we derived um we said that the time required to do a batch ultrafiltration where you're going from 
um, an initial volume V0 to a volume V, where V is less than V0, and S here is defined as V over V0. Um, sometimes V0 over V is called the, the volume reduction factor or the volume I can't remember, I, I'm not one for jargon, but basically the whole point of ultrafiltration is to reduce your volume. So what your initial volume is always bigger than your, your uh, subsequent volume at any given time. So S here we defined as V over V0, um, and we know that it spans the range, oh that should be an S there, it spans the range um, from between zero and one. So it's a little bit like the X factor that we had in continuous feed and bleed systems. You don't have to introduce this, but I think um, you probably notice this when I do derivations, which I maybe go a step beyond what you think is necessary, but it's always worthwhile because when you go to do actual numerical calculations, if you have parameters that you know the span of, it. It just makes things life a lot easier and it also means you're less likely to make mistakes because you, you end up with fewer parameters knocking about. Um, so it's always, it's not just a fixation with maths for maths sake, it, it actually does make you less prone to make errors as you go along. Okay, so S then can vary between um, zero and one. So typically one um, or S will be less than one because you're, you're you're reducing all the time. Your final volume, in other words, is going to be less than your V0. So S at any given time is going to be less than one. And V0 over Ka there, that's, remember, K is your mass transfer coefficient. So V0 over Ka um, is kind of a characteristic time for, for uh, batch old filtration, because if you look at the units of it, it has to be units of time, because obviously the integral is dimensionless, um, because B is a log of C lim over C0. Um, so this is kind of like a dimensionless time. This is meters cubed, say. This would be meters per second. This would be meters squared. So that has a, this bit here has units of, of time. So you can consider it as kind of a, a characteristic time of the, um, the batch process. Anyway, so we want to have the focus on in this module basically on actually doing calculations and um, we have a number of options here. We recognize that, well, yeah, well, we do recognize, I suppose, that you can't really sit down and do some sort of clever substitution like you would have if you did leaving cert uh, maths, where, you know, the integration question was always really just a, a test of memory. And when whether you remembered a particular clever substitution. But this integral is, no matter what clever substitution you do, you're, you're not gonna be able to solve it. So we ultimately, we want to get a number out of this. So for particular values of V0 or K and A and S and B, of course, we wanna be able to calculate um, the time. And we've got four options here, and I'm gonna go through them all. Um, it won't take long, so this is not gonna be a big, long lecture. The first is we can get the exact solution using pure maths. Now you might think I'm contradicting myself when I said earlier that you can't actually solve this by hand. You can actually, but it introduces some maths that seems a little bit obscure. Um, it's, it actually is only obscure because it's the type of maths that doesn't crop up that often. It's actually no different from the the normal maths, signs and costs and all that kind of stuff that we encounter um, all the time in, in engineering. So we can get an exact solution and then basically get out, not so much our calculators, but perhaps a computational software package like MATLAB or um, not Excel, actually Excel wouldn't be able to calculate the, the pure maths solution of this integral. Um, but I got a student a few years ago to write some code to so that you could just write, we, he wrote a little kind of routine which calculated this unusual function that I'm gonna show you in a minute. Uh, so it can be easily incorporated into Excel. I couldn't do it now. <laughs> I've forgotten how to do that kind of coding, but it, it is possible, but uh, it is it is a little bit obscure. So you mean, you won't get a, 
the button on your calculator with the function I'm going to talk about in a minute. The, the second, and this is probably the more important one really, because again, there are so many tools about and they're free online that there's no reason why you can't get an exact numerical solution to the software. So in other words, you don't actually plow through to get an answer in terms of pure mathematics, but you, you work out the answer anyway. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. You can approximate the integral for s close to one, for example, just like we did in feed and bleed ultrafiltration. Um, if we had, remember we had q0 over k into one minus x minus log x minus log c lim over c0 is equal to zero. The, the issue there was the log term. And again, if we assume that x was close to one, we could replace the log with x minus one. In the same way, if you replace the, s, the log s here with s minus one. So if we go up to this and we replace that with s minus one, now that assumes that s is not that different from one, meaning that you don't have a very significant reduction in your volume. Well, then that can be integrated and I, that's going to be an exercise on your, your problem set. Um, you can make it more accurate actually by including s minus one squared terms as well. I, I think I did that in my book. I think so, um, which actually improves the accuracy a little bit. So. So you, in other words, you can get a, an approximation to the integral by replacing the log, x, the log s with s minus one. And the next thing you can do is, and this, I used to hate this when I was a student because, and that's why I hate doing it now. You'd go through all this fancy derivation of an equation and then you, the lecturer would say, well, we can solve this. So we use an empirical approach, meaning one that's just kind of plucked out of the air, but it agrees with the data. I used to find that incredibly frustrating. I'd, you know, well, we all did. We'd say, well, what did we go through all that maths for? You know, just to throw it aside and um, and just talk about a makey up equation. So I'll, I'll talk about this in the problem set. It's a, it's a very well-known approximation and it, it actually frustratingly works quite well. It's only in error by a few percent, which um, always annoys me. Um, anyway, so I'm going to go back and get the exact solution to using the pure maths approach. And there's a whole branch of maths out there now, and it's called um, computer algebra or comp uh, well, computer algebra, I'll run with that. And I'm going to bring you to a fabulous website. Well, it's part of a fabulous website, which um, I know students don't like because um, they told me. Um, and the reason they don't like it is because, and this seems a little bit paradoxical, is that this website allows you to input equations in a way that's very flexible. So it doesn't have one set of rules only. So you know, for example, that in Excel, if you want to denote multiplication, you have to include an asterisk. <laughs> Um, just like this. So if x multiplied by y, you have to write x by by y, or 2x would be equal to 2 by x. Sorry, there's only two equals. But this, what I'm going to show you, it's a really, it's like a form of artificial intelligence almost. It kind of knows what you're trying to say. And um, so sometimes when you're learning something new, you like well-defined rules. And this seems to have a mind of its own. It's 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 a really interesting bit of software. The other thing is to use it is you need to be really aware of, uh, I suppose, really fundamental ideas in maths. So if you ask it to solve a quadratic, it'll throw back tons of stuff at you for every conceivable scenario of the quadratic where you have real roots or complex roots or whatever. So you can get a little bit overwhelmed by it. Um, but anyway, I'll show you their, their little integrator. Um, so I'm going to go to a thing called um, Wolfram Alpha, okay? And I'm, I'm in their, their integral bit. So you can see the link up there. I'll, uh, but if you just go into, I'll, I'll check, check it. Actually, I might just go to Wolfram Alpha because it's a brilliant site to have a, a, a mess around and so this is the main page so i'm going to say 
okay, I want to do an integration, okay? And the function I want to integrate is 1 over b plus. Now, this um, software wants you to write log instead of ln for a natural log. So, so it's ln. And it also, it always assumes that your independent variable, in other words, what you're integrating with respect to is called x. And we, we've been using s, um, but let's just call it x because that way Wolfram Alpha is happy. Okay. Um, so I've told it to integrate that. Hopefully this will work now. So I'll accept those cookies. There we go. So it's. I just think this is a phenomenal bit of software or, or mathematics. I know there's some, certainly for doing the integrations, there's a famous algorithm, it begins with R, I can't remember what, what it is. But this general um, ability of this website to work in terms of symbols and not just numbers. I mean, we're always taught that computers boil things down to zeros and one, but, but this website, wolframalpha.com, um, does amazing things. <laughs> I just, I think it's brilliant. And I've learned loads of maths from it, actually. Um, well, not loads, some maths, you know, I've learned about new, new functions and this is one of them. So when you do that integration, we see that we get, this is just the indefinite integral with um, no limits on it. We get e to the minus b, and then you have this thing, ei into b plus log of x. I remember log is the natural log. And I remember when I stumbled across a few things like this um, a few years ago, the, this EI thing, there's also an LI thing, and then there's a thing called the Lambert W function that I'd never heard of, but I've, they've actually turned out to be very useful in my research. But EI here is, is what's called the exponential integral, okay? So it's sometimes these functions you've never heard, heard of, like cosine of something is what's called a regular function. Okay, so we're used to cosines and sines, and the exponential is a regular function, or the log is, is a regular function. But beyond that, there's a whole string of what are called um, special functions. So if you go into, say, Google, you go for special functions. So that, that's their definition. Let's see if there's an image of them. There might be a table of special functions. There's a whole, I don't know what that is. Um, but there's a whole load of these special functions that in fact are not special. I mean, one of the things in say heat transfer that comes up when you're doing with, with heat transfer in, in pipes, um, you get a thing called, anything with radial geometry like that, you get a thing called the Bessel function. And then you have the genre of functions. You have, so the whole world of maths out there that's called special, and it's only called special because we don't encounter them in, in our, um, our daily lives. Um, so this thing called the exponential function is, is no more unusual or special than an, the exponential itself or a log or a cosine or a sine. Um, So I'm going to this. Okay. So if we look then at what the time is for, um, that's what if when you put in the limits, this is the time for a batch ultrafiltration. Okay. Um, and it turns out that EI, this exponential function, has a series definition, just like sine or a cos. Like if you're pressing the button on your calculator to get the sign of something. This is what the calculator is doing. It's evaluating this series. So if you want to get sign of a certain number, the calculator just plugs in and works out all of these in the same way with, with costs. It does this. So, so there is a similar kind of series for EI, um, which is a little bit more complicated, but it um, it has links to, there was a really famous Indian lad. He was, he died very young in around the turn of the 20th century who, who worked 
he had his own notation and he just never stood in anywhere but he was an absolute genius it was called Ramnijan or something like that but he he worked out a lot of these things and nobody knows quite how he figured it out um, it, there's a movie made of it himself and it was a famous mathematician called Thomas Hardy and I think they had a relationship of some kind um, but it's this guy was from the middle of he, he came to Cambridge from the middle of nowhere in India and he was just a genius what was his name Ramnijan I think it was but he was he was a real enigma but anyway his 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 stamp is all over things in the inter, uh, exponential integral and, and that kind of thing. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to say that we're not going to use this at all because it's, it requires to really to, to use MATLAB. Um, but all I'm going to say is that there is a whole world of maths out there with functions that really are no different from sines and cosses and the like, but we've just never heard of them. So in a way that the batch filtration can problem can be solved and it has been even though most textbooks for example would say you can solve it it can if, if you're willing to to delve into um, relatively unusual mathematics I won't even say uh, obscure because this EI thing crops up in loads of areas of physics anyway so that's that's just a little bit of history I suppose and um, the second approach we said we could talk about is a numerical solution with, with computational software okay so this is a situation where you're actually given numbers for your your uh, various parameters and you just want an answer back you don't want any symbols you just want to do the calculation and it's a whole branch of mathematics as you know called numerical methods and there are lots of ways for doing integrals without using a whole bunch of symbols. There are various um, algorithms that have been developed over the years. You may have come across the trapezoidal rule in, in maths um, or Simpson's rule, and then there are Gaussian methods, all kinds of methods. And they're based on the idea that when you're evaluating the integral of, of a function between two limits, what you're talking about geometrically is you're drawing the curve and then you're evaluating the area under that curve between two limits. So based on that concept, if you say chop that area up into rectangles and, and triangles, you can develop various algorithms of various degrees of, of complexity. So you're never actually solving the symbolic problem. You're just you're just working out a number for the answer. And I suppose from our point of view, this is the most powerful thing to use to get the exact answer. So I'll go back to this and I'm going to imagine I have a number here for B. So remember B is log C lim over C0. And I'm going to say, suppose it's 2.5. And it, now we're going to put the limits of it. So X equal to, suppose I look at a system where say the volume is dropped by a factor of five, so x is 0 0.2. So v over v0 is 0 0.2. Two, one, I think I've got my syntax right. So I'm telling it integrate this between 0 0.2 and 1. So it's a physical system where we're going from, say, 100 litres down to 20 litres. And I'm going to see what we get here. And we can see it's given us the answer, the numerical answer. So this this kind of um, approach is just so easy to use. Now you do have to have access to the internet, but there's actually a really nice Wolfram Alpha app you can download. You have to pay four or five dollars a month or something for it. Um, I, I don't have it on my phone. I'm not that obsessed, but um, but th this is really the approach that. I think everybody should take if they want to count. I mean, there's no point in approximating things if you can, if you have such a fantastic tool at your disposal um, where you can just do that little tiny bit of code um, and work out the numerical answer to an integral that, you know, if you go the long way about derive the pure maths thing, then you'd have to write a big expression in, in um, in Excel anyway, if, even if you had e, the EI function in your Excel. Um, so, I mean, I think that's simple. 
So that's something that I'd expect you to be able to do um, is to go into Wolfram Alpha and write something like that syntax there. Syntax is the word just to mean how you write something in a particular programming language. Um, so if you see there we get 0.449. Suppose I didn't want to reduce the volume so much. Well, then we expect that number to be smaller than 0.45. Uh, so if we're only halving the volume, that is only 0.229. So, so this is there's really no reason why we wouldn't use this nowadays. Um, not that everyone's going around calculating batch filtration times, to be honest, um, because very often the people are operating at where the limiting flux model doesn't actually apply. But even so, it, this is just a fantastic tool. Uh, so I'd expect you, you know, I could ask you a question in, in my assessment to, to go to Wolfram Alpha and work out an integral if I asked you a question on, on, on batch ultrafiltration. Um, while we're here, um, let's go back to Wolfram Alpha itself. And let's solve an equation from, from continuous feed and bleed. So let's say solve say two by one i'm going to just put in the asterisks here just because i have it minus log x minus 2.5 equals zero so that's basically the form of the equation we had for um feed and bleed systems where x there is the ratio of the inlet concentration to the retentate concentration so we could use solver to solve this equation and um, the thing about solver is we have to give it a um a guess and so let's hopefully this will work because i'm winging this now might be in and we get 0.32 okay so it's fl flown through it now this is actually interesting because this is another one of these funny functions actually which you don't need to know about you could completely forget about here all you're interested in is the number here and this is a thing that comes with various names, um, the Omega function or the Albert or Lambert W function. Um, and again, that's a function that arises uh, in a lot of systems actually where you have exponentials and logs. Um, now, this is a bit of a cheat because to evaluate W, you actually, you, there are no simple series you can use. You actually have to use a numerical method to evaluate W. So I don't really consider this W to be a real thing, even though I've written a couple of papers where I've used it. Um, but again, you've got a really simple um, statement to make, and that will generally work. And this is the thing about um, Wolfram Alpha, I, I can get rid of that, and it'll still do it, I think. Yeah, it still does it, whereas Excel would throw that really irritating window at you where it says, do you accept this correction? And you say, no, I don't. It's, I find that really annoying. It's just annoying that myself for missing out a bracket or whatever. But, but that can be a little bit disconcerting, um, the fact that it's not consistent. So I think you're wise just to always do, do that. So again, that's just another tool. Let me just see, just to show you the and solve uh, a by yeah uh, so a by x squared plus uh, b by x plus c okay so that's a standard quadratic okay let's see what it throws back in us hope it doesn't mind that capital x hang on plus <clears throat> it gives you all these scenarios depending on whether you have depending on what the values of the coefficients of c are there's various different outcomes um, and there it's not always in the same format as we're used to we're used to one particular format so it can actually just cause students a little bit of confusion when it just chucks all this stuff back at you for a different range of parameters. Um, 
so anyway, that that's that's something I'd expect you to be able to do is is do numerical integration. So it, and it can be any function. So I can integrate. I suppose there was a function uh, x squared. It probably even knows that that's a mistake. X equals zero to five. So yeah, it's x cubed over three between zero and five. So that's what you'd expect. <coughs> so excellent um, bit of software. I I spent ages messing around in this and discovered those functions and worked them into into my my work. But it's just I've learned loads. There's so, so many different weird functions that you come up with that makes you think there's a world out there of, of maths that is potentially really useful, but we don't use it because it's it's kind of a bit obscure. OK, so I'll go back to our document. So really, that is something I really want you to be able to do. I mean, it's not that necessarily that you'll be calculating integrals out in Pfizer's or whatever, but I just it's just to create an awareness that, you know, you have to of what's available out in the world in terms of technology or, or computational um, computational software or whatever that you, we all need to be adaptable you know and I could teach ultrafiltration the exact same way as I did you know 10 15 years ago or I could adapt to you know to, to what we have at our disposal these days and if there is a website a well-regarded website the guy uh, wolfram is a very famous mathematician he invented the uh, software package mathematica which is really what um, wolfram alpha is actually and um, so there'd be no point in, in me doing these sort of methods that i would have used as a student trial and error methods and particularly this type of approach where you get to an equation that you, you can't really solve well you think you can't solve so you say actually I'm not going to use all that nice maths I'm going to come up with some empirical approach so the empirical approach while it's the most famous approach and if you there are not that many membrane textbooks around but they all talk about this empirical approach and one particular empirical approach in, in particular so that has now been relegated to the problem sets it's been kicked out this year so and this is the first year so it's getting a red card uh, that doesn't mean this is getting a yellow card but this is getting a red card and it's it's just um i'm just going to use it purely as an exercise in doing balances and, and that kind of thing but it's it's getting the boot because there's no need for it um, this is of mi minor interest really the approximation although it does work reasonably well but it's this which we'll be using as our go-to method for batch ultrafiltration. So it's something, and the great thing about the assessments this year, the four years have an assessment today, and yours is going to be very like it in, in structure. And um, I'll talk about that later, but it's where you be upload as part of your answers, you'll be uploading spreadsheets, you know, so we're just trying to move into the 21st century. Okay, so that's it. I'm going to have breakfast and um, get back into bed maybe. <laughs> No, 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 I'm going to work, work very, very hard today. Um, it's a miserable day. Anyway, that's it. And uh, I, I hope that all didn't te seem too obscure, but I, I just, the more I'm doing this job, the more I think you need to be aware of the changes that are happening out in the world of, of technology and industry. And not just to f obsess about the fine detail of membranes or reactors or whatever, like the, it's important to acquire knowledge about, about bioprocessing in all its forms, but it's even more or just as important to acquire skills that use that knowledge. Um, so I think this little um, diversion into obscurity in terms of the pure maths, at least, is I think it's worthwhile. And I think, but we'll build all assessment. If, I know I, I don't like talking about assessment too much, but assessment will be built around being able to use the Wolfram Alpha page to do um, numerical solutions. Okay, that's it. Have a good day.